this point, the more astute members of the audience will have noticed that, despite the presence of tusks, what is on the screen in front of you is probably not an elephant. What you see here is in fact the Southern Warthog, one of four subspecies of the Common Warthog, and commonly found across the Addo Elephant National Park. Warthog are classed as a medium-sized species at up to 1.5 meters long, not counting the tail, and up to 85 centimeters tall at the shoulder. Females are typically a great deal smaller than the males, maxing out at around 75 kilograms, where the males are up to double that. Both the males and the females possess tusks, and despite appearances, they actually have four, not two. One pair each growing from the upper and lower jaws. These tusks grow continuously throughout the warthog's lives, but the lower pair, unlike the upper, are constantly worn down every time the warthog opens and closes its mouth. This means that the lower pair of tusks are razor sharp and can inflict serious wounds on both predators and other warthog. Despite their slightly portly appearance, at top speed a common warthog can move up to 48 kilometers an hour, although it is very rare to see them moving at this sort of pace. especially in the particularly hot conditions we encountered in Addo, where they were far more likely to be found either dust bathing or, if possible, mud bathing, to keep themselves cool and parasite free. One odd detail about Warthog is that they will tend to feed knelt down on their front wrists and the calloused pads that allow them to do this comfortably develop whilst they're still in the fetal stages. Much like the zebra in Addo Elephant Park, the warthog were in the process of giving birth to their young. The sow will actually stay separate from the sounder, the collective noun for a group of pigs for several weeks while suckling her young. The piglets themselves very quickly have full mobility, although will often stay very close to their mother for protection. In part due, quite frankly, to the fact that it would be quicker to list the species that don't prey on warthogs than to list those that do. But I think that's about enough from me for the moment. I'll leave you to enjoy some playing piglets until we move on to the stars of the show. And here, at long last, we have the undisputed kings of the African grassland. The African bush elephant is quite simply the largest terrestrial animal on the planet. And with the largest recorded individual weighing an estimated 10,400 kilograms, they are not a species you want to offend. But as interesting as they are for sheer size and mass, it is their intelligence and social complexity that makes them, to me, the standout species. The matriarchal primary groups demonstrate deep and complex social linkages, both within the group and with multiple herds occupying the same range. And many individuals within a herd will teach or care for the young as the situation dictates. Even now, after decades if not centuries of research into these animals, studies of them continue to bring new details to light. 
One of the more recent developments observing the social behaviour of bull elephants in particular has brought to light that far from being the solitary hormone fueled wrecking balls they have often been portrayed as, bull elephants actually form bachelor herds in which the oldest and generally largest males will pass knowledge on to the younger bulls. These larger bulls also maintain a similar level of ecological knowledge to the matriarchs of the female and juvenile herds and will lead these bachelor herds to water or forage in extreme conditions just like these matriarchs will. Don't misunderstand, I'm not presenting bull elephants for Father of the Year as they serve no pre- or postnatal purpose beyond the uh, provision of genetic material. And they are still, without a shadow of a doubt, absolute powerhouses that will ruin the day of any one or anything that they find particularly offensive. The younger males in these bachelor groups will pick up on this behaviour and it may be over time that this is what leads to some of the aggressive tendencies of the bulls, but it still remains incredibly difficult to keep that knowledge in the forefront of your mind when you see the younger elephants exploring and indeed eating the world around them with deep joy exactly like a human child would, in a caring and supportive environment. Of course, the herbivores in Addo Elephant Park don't have it all their own way, even the mega herbivores like the elephants. For every range there is in size of prey species, there is something more or less equivalent, at least, in predators. Ranging from the lions, which unfortunately we did not see in Addo, down to the much, much smaller yellow mongoose, which we did, thankfully. Somewhere in the middle, though, lie the black-backed jackals, which, despite their similar appearances to coyotes, wolves and domestic dogs, actually diverged about three and a half million years ago and share many more physical characteristics with foxes than they do with dogs. Possibly as a result of being omnivores rather than carnivores. They are accomplished and versatile hunters, taking everything from small invertebrates like beetles or grasshoppers, up to rodents, hares and even, on rare occasions, antelope. A solitary black back jackal, which I would like to point out weighs up to 13 kilograms, has been observed taking out a fully grown adult impala, which can weigh up to 76 kilos, five times or more the weight of the jackal. This behaviour is very unusual in a number of respects, however. Jackals usually engage in hunting activities in a mated pair, and when they do, as you can see here, they will generally target much smaller and less dangerous species. A little further down the weight scale lies the yellow mongoose, which confusingly is sometimes also referred to as the red meerkat. Weighing in at less than half a kilogram, as many as 12 subspecies of the yellow mongoose can be found scattered across southern Africa. Despite their superficial resemblance to the weasels found so commonly across Europe, North America and, well, virtually everywhere else in the world that's not Africa or Australia, mongoose are almost entirely unrelated to them, and any resemblance is really just convergent evolution. As with many species found across Addo Elephant Park, the yellow mongoose has an unusual set of social structures which allow it to compete more effectively in a complex and rapidly changing environment. Yellow mongoose family groups are hierarchical, uh, based around a central breeding pair and their most recent offspring, but sub-adults from previous matings and indeed elderly mongoose related to the breeding pair can also be present within the group. Most interestingly though is the fact that the yellow mongoose will share its burrow with other species, such as the Cape Ground Squirrel, or indeed other meerkat species. 
When you consider that the yellow mongoose is carnivorous and will take rodents, it feels unusual that not only will the mongoose share its burrows with these, but all species will contribute to the maintenance of the burrow and extension as necessary. Finally, for the species we observed in Addo Elephant Park is one that we've encountered several times previously in South Africa, the spotted hyena. I have made my opinions about a certain much beloved children's film very clear at this point, and I'm not going to go over it again. But I am instead going to talk about some of the ways in which they are correctly perceived as quite dangerous animals. One of the ways in which this species is profoundly well suited to their environment is their ability to, well, clear up carcasses, shall we say. Whether they've created it or they're opportunistically feeding from someone else's. The spotted hyena has disproportionately large jaw muscles and a specially vaulted skull, allowing it to generate a bite force of just under 8,000 kilopascals. For context, the force required to break the human femur is about four kilopascals. Perhaps unsurprisingly, elephant bones are somewhat more robust than those of humans, and that is what you can see here, an elephant femur slowly being chewed apart by a hyena. It should be noted that the hyena is not responsible for the death of the elephant, although the hyena probably feels that, in a push, it probably could have been. And now, because I know not everyone shares my fascination with hyenas, I'm going to leave you with some cute piglets playing before I leave you for the week.